everybody. Before I start, I just want to say to everyone up here, you're welcome. In no other place but Hollywood could these 10 people make the kind of money they make and sleep with the kind of people they sleep with. I would give an introduction, but I don't need to. Ron Burgundy. People, listen, listen, I don't have a lot of time, all right? I don't have a lot of time. I'm, I'm currently, I'm currently over at stage 24, hosting Spike TV's Your Mother's a Fat Bitch award show. Some real clever writing, great energy over there. Boy, we got a great gang of talented comics here tonight. We've got uh, Tom Dreesen, uh, <laughs> Willie Tyler and Lester. I didn't, I didn't realize Lester was a live human being. <laughs> Gary Mule Deer, Fanny Flag, Top Notch. Star studded evening. Listen, I'm just gonna cut to the chase. Justin Biber. Justin Bieber. You've been taking it on the chin tonight. You really have. In fact, absolutely abused. And I'm just here to say one thing. You people don't know what the hell you're talking about. As far as I'm concerned, this guy is doing it right. Here's a couple things I know. September 1st, 2014. Bieber arrested for a collision with a minivan in his hometown of Stratford, Ontario, Canada. And then beat up the occupant of the minivan. Nice work! <laughs> October 18th, 2010, Bieber accused of assaulting a 12-year-old at a laser tag arena. Kaboom! <laughs> I only wish the kid was a nine-year-old. March 28th, 2013, Bieber flies into Munich with his pet monkey, Mally. Doesn't have the proper paperwork. So he leaves it at a zoo in Germany. It's a monkey. It's named Mally. Don't think twice, you leave it at a German zoo. March 4th, 2013, two hours late to a concert in Dubai because he refused to stop playing a video game. Say what? <laughs> Hocked a loogie at his neighbor after the guy complained that Bieber was driving 100 miles per hour in his gated community neighborhood. Eat that, bitch. <laughs> July 10th, 2013, Bieber pees in a restaurant mop bucket. As he runs off, he sprays a photograph of Bill Clinton with a bottle of blue liquid and yells, F Bill Clinton. There's not a person in this room who hasn't done that, you hypocritical assholes. <laughs> this kid has spunk, moxie, and probably a few other STDs, okay? <laughs> I've always encouraged people to stay classy. And what's more classy than hanging out with Floyd Mayweather? Would I love to see Beebs spending time with Oscar Pistorius? Of course I would, but that day will come. <laughs> People refer to Mr. Bieber as a, as a kid or a boy. But here's a newsflash, gang. He's a man. A full-grown man who works and loves and makes things with his hands. A man who sings songs for nine-year-olds and cuts his hair like a gay figure skater. <laughs> this guy just continues to impress. Is there anything he can't do? In fact, I pulled my, my pants down. 
and took a big creamy shit in the green room because I thought to myself, that's how the Beebs would do it. Again and again and again. If anything, Justin Bieber, not only do you need to continue to live your life with the same reckless abandon, I suggest you turn up the heat. <laughs> oh, and one last thing. If you're watching from your monkey cage in Germany, <laughs> go to bed, Mally. Good night. A lot of your friends wanted to be here but couldn't make it. Fortunately, we were able to send a video crew down to a very special friend, someone who is very close to our guest of honor. Please welcome Jeff Foxworthy's cow. I'm the most important cow Jeff Foxworthy has. Bill Ingvall's cow has to suck my dick. <laughs> A peak for a drummer because they're one of the smartest mammals. Just below the dolphin and just above Larry the Cable Guy. <laughs> Jeff is an original thinker. For instance, most people use their hands to milk a cow. Not Jeff. He uses his mouth so that his hands are free to play with my ass. <laughs> Cells on my tits that are funnier than this guy. <laughs> Have you seen Jeff's act? My shit is funnier, darker, and better constructed. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a piece of shit I think I can get a development deal for at the WB. Please welcome a very special guest. Thank you very much. I appreciate that introduction. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. It's an honor to be here tonight. It's always good to be in Manhattan. <laughs> Manhattan, as I understand, is an island. An island entirely surrounded by water. <laughs> I want to thank Comedy Central for... for allowing me this opportunity to be at the Jeff Foxworthy Roast. <laughs> I like Jeff. <laughs> He's my favorite comedian. <laughs> I like his jokes. Uh, they're simple. <laughs> Jeff is a simple man. He's a simple man, but he is a smart man. Now, he doesn't like to show it, because when he does, folks start talking to him real fast. <laughs> I understand that. I can identify. I know a lot of folks joke about me. <laughs> 
lot of people say I'm not the brightest bulb in the knife drawer. <laughs> I followed Jeff's career. He was destined to be a comedian. His grandfather was funny. His father was funny. Jeff's funny. Tree don't fall far from the nuts. <laughs> Jeff and I have something in common. As I look around the room, I can see that he surrounds himself with a lot of successful people. <laughs> and I've done the same. My cabinet is filled with sterling men and women. I've got a Secretary of Defense, Donald Rumpelstiltskins. <laughs> I'm also proud of my Vice President, Dick Cheney. I appreciate him. I, uh... <laughs> I just wish I knew where he was. <laughs> I never know where old Cheney is. There are days I'm sitting in the Oval Office, I just walk out into the hallway and yell, Marco! <laughs> I care about this country. I care about the people of this country. I care about our senior citizens. Let me tell you something. Older citizens face the highest risk of death in this country. <laughs> Seniors die every day. <laughs> I care about our economy. I'm asked every day, Mr. President, what about our deficit? What about our mounting deficit? What are you going to do? I understand these concerns. <laughs> and I share these concerns. <laughs> and that is why today I have put before I have put before Congress <laughs> a proposal to sell Canada. Finally, let me say this. Everybody else tonight's been uh, ripping on you. <laughs> I want to say a word of encouragement. I appreciate Jeff Fox for that. I appreciate his, uh, I appreciate his good family values. <laughs> I appreciate the fact that he's not only a family man, but he's a religious man. He, he doesn't flaunt it. But Jeff is an example that religion doesn't have to divide us. It doesn't have to tear us apart. It can bring us together. It's like this here. Looky here. Here's a visual. Looky here. <laughs> Look here. You see her? Look here. See, there's the church. <laughs> there's the steeple. Open the door and look at all the people. There you are. There you are. Look there. there you are. Thank you. God bless you, Jeff. God bless you all. And God bless America. Thank you very much. Thank you. We're very lucky to have our next roaster. He's a legend. The executive who brought Full House to network television, Sol Schwartz. I remember the day that uh, uh, they came to me with the Full House pitch. It was the last day my assistant, Jacqueline, blew me. I remember it clearly. I, and uh, in walked in the Full House people. And they pitched their little show, their dream show, their classic. And I said, 
it's a yes, but I wanted to star three schmucks I've never heard of because I want to prove that time slot is everything. <laughs> Let me tell you something, John Stamos. You are the most talented actor that I have ever come across. You are wonderful. You're delightful. You're a dream. You're fantastic. No one has ever touched your talent. It is remarkable. You are the best performer I have ever seen. My balls are clapping. You are truly God's favorite actor, John Stamos. Uh, oh, by the way, I've already read tomorrow's Variety. I get it early. You've been replaced on ER by Jerry O'Connell. It's true. Uh, let's talk about a true mensch, my pride and joy, who I discovered 25 years ago, Bob Saget. I'll never, yes. I think you're more than just the sitcom dad or the guy who hosts that video show. You're really one of the shittiest comics I've ever seen. The other day, I, after all these years, I'd never met the Olsen twins. He introduced me to them. I said to him, how do I tell them apart? He says, Ashley swallows. <laughs> What's my character's name again? Uh, Sal Schwartz. Bob, he called him Saul. <laughs> John Stamos is so not Jewish. Please welcome Saul Schwartz. The truth is, Bob, we've worked together for many, many years, and I'm starting to think I have Alzheimer's because I can't remember a single funny thing you ever said. <laughs> All right, I'm not fucking around. I said to them before the show, I said, uh, I want to say something nice about him now, and I swear on the screen it's a sincere moment. <laughs> <laughs> what a sincere moment. No. What I want to say to you is, we never hang out. I'd like to. We, uh, we see each other. We're always happy to see each other. I've always liked you. And uh, I remember when we first met, you asked me if I knew how dry my grandma's vagina was. Those are the first thing you, really? I was opening for you in the 80s. And uh, that's the first thing you said to me. And I knew that I liked you from that moment on. <laughs> Isn't that a fantastic, you never met somebody. Hey, how, do you know how dry you're? His vagina is? That's fucking great! You know he's a great person. But I think the world of you, and for me, it was an honor to be here tonight. Thanks. We are very excited, and I'm just gonna say it, honored to introduce our next roaster. He's responsible, not just for my career, but for every single person's career in this entire room. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the president of Hollywood. Hello, everybody. Hello, hello, everybody. Before I start, I just want to say to everyone up here, you're welcome. In no other place but Hollywood could these 10 people make the kind of money they make and sleep with the kind of people they sleep with. <laughs> Seth Rogen, you're welcome, you Harry Canuck. I, Hollywood, made the world accept you. I put you on a movie poster and I said, deal with it. <laughs> and then I put Barbra Streisand on that poster and the world said, no. <laughs> the guilt trip. Listen, if I wanted to watch two ugly Jews weaving through traffic, I'd watch Seinfeld's web series. <laughs> And Jonah, I'm assuming you're here because Seth is. People call me all the time and they say, Hollywood, do we really need two of these guys? But I own you, Jonah. I fucking own you. 
If I tried to buy you on iTunes, it would say, are you sure you want to purchase? Because you already own this fuck. <laughs> Andy Sandberg. <laughs> per correct pronunciation. As Handby. Looking forward to your new show, Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Funny cops. You're always pushing the envelope, Andy. <laughs> What's gonna happen when you run out of funny crimes like graffiti and pickpockets? Can't wait to see episode 10 when Brooklyn Nine-Nine has to deal with a rape. I dropped the rape kit, smorgidord. <laughs> yeah, that's gonna be fun. Aziz, you're welcome. Aziz, I admire how you've never taken the stereotypical Indian roles. I just wanna tell you that if you did, you would make so much more money. <laughs> if you came out here right now with crossed eyes playing a sitar, I would fall on my ass laughing. <laughs> But still, what an actor. Such phenomenal range. <laughs> You're like the Daniel Day-Lewis of only doing one thing. 